Okay, so today uh, we are reacting to the newest Fateless video. My name is Vex. Uh, we're taking a break from the spooky vibes. Uh, we're back to Weeb Wednesday. Uh, we record these live on stream if you want to uh, chat along with us as we dive into these Fateless videos. Typically I do a, at least one video uh, or one reaction on a Friday with the Friday leaks, but this video is a bit too juicy um, to put two in one day, so we're doing it a little bit ahead of time. Anyway, let's let's watch this video. I'll try not to pause too much. I did watch this ahead of time. Um, there's some good some good talking points here. Hey guys, this is Simon from Fateless. This is going to be a video where we talk about some of your ideas, some of the ideas that are coming through the community and how we Hope feel about loud. them in terms of adding them into our game. The way we're building Fateless, we've got Whoa. pretty much like Fatless. 70%. We've gone out and, and played every single game of this genre, this type, and dipped into other games like MMOs, that type of thing, and said, right, 70%, let's find features that we think are really enjoyable to play, and then let's implement our take on them. And then 30%, let's try and innovate in this space. And that, that I think kind that's of reasonable. Really important I think that's reasonable. If you try and innovate too hard, actually what you do is you put people off, uh, people that really enjoy this genre of game, this type of game, you put them off because there's too much for the brain to understand. So they do need some systems where it's like, yeah, I kind of get what's going to happen here. I get the feel of it. And then you, you gradually drip feed in things where it's like, damn, this is totally fresh. And I need some brain power to like really understand what's going on. So that's our philosophy on it. That's our take. Grab so I, I don't foresee this video being taking me too long to get through. So if you're currently watching this on 1.5 speed, more power to you. Um, I, I'm going to preface this with we've, uh, we've talked about this before. I don't think that a game or a game company should take into account too much of what a community wants. Uh, and that might sound a bit harsh, but, and I think one of the questions talks about this slightly, I think it's important to maintain a vision. And maybe your vision includes including the community in certain aspects. Maybe, you know, if you're doing 70% is the genre that you're in and you're sticking to that. The 30% wiggle room you've got, maybe five to 10% of that is allocated to ideas that spark in inspiration <clears throat> or quality of life things that come from your experience playing games or your community from the community um, like suggestions tab. Amps has done some great work. so. I go and read every single post in the innovation ideas thread on our Discord. You can join our Discord. All the links are going to be down below. Uh, you can also. I've got away, two suggestions. It's I'm going to save for the end of the right video. Now. I will do a, a video talking about what to expect in the beta and sort of timelines and stuff. I'll do that probably in the next couple of weeks. But uh, we've had a lot of people asking, "When's it due?" Just so you know, Q1 next year is when we're planning for the beta. Don't know exact dates yet. So yeah, so Gramps has gone in and collated a bunch of the cool ideas that have come from you guys in the community. And really in this video, I'm just gonna talk through my take on them, my, my view, and uh, whether we think we can see them in our roadmap going forward. And I did say in our last video, our features now are kind of like what's called feature locked. So our launch set of features we've decided on, but we do have following that, you know, like a year long roadmap of other stuff we wanna implement. I don't know if that's, maybe that's okay. Maybe that's okay. Because hopefully if they, if they give themselves a lead year, a, a lead of a year in terms of feature design and uh, events and things like that with, you know, enough wiggle room to like, you know, slice in an emergency event in case something cool comes up or whatever. I think that's a really good time frame for a game like this, especially with the design backend that they have. They have like these 
sprints and marathons of just like I mean, I don't know I don't know how it I'm not I'm not a part of the Fateless team, right? I I don't know if it's like three weeks of essentially crunch and then a week off for the month or whatever, which could like stress out workers over a long time. I'm assuming it's not like that. I'm hoping it's not like that. But they have like a hyper focus on oh okay, this this two week period, we're gonna hyper focus on this aspect of the game. We're gonna get it done, we're gonna get it locked, and then we're gonna move on as as like a whole team or like whatever. That's the that's the the sense that I get. If they can maintain that pace, and they I guess they have for like the past year, um, going forward, if by the time they launch, right, in Q3, I think is the current, Q3 is the current um, projected launch. That means by 2026 summer is how far in advance they've, they've looked, right? Because if they are, if they're, constantly staying a year ahead uh they they give themselves a, a good lead and i think that's really where you want to be uh, it, it, a bit too if your game's as big of a scope we talked about this before too if your game's as big of scope as world of warcraft you need to be five six years down the line but for a game like this you need a roadmap you need something for players to look forward to so you could have like uh, drip marketing and sort of uh, hype gathering you know things like that so that you've got a steady flow of events and a steady flow of features. So it's not like it's not like Raid Shadow Legends where something might come out every six months. Like Yeah, and like Non saying, it gives it gives you a sense that you care enough about your game that your your game is going to survive longer than the first couple of months. So like typically when a game like this comes out there's a ton of hype there's a really cool character that's the first like featured character a patch a bug fix patch another patch comes out and then the game's dead because the devs you know they they either just wanted the money and they they got the money from the launch and that's it or they didn't think far enough ahead and then six months after the game dies then they release this awesome new content patch that could have been started before the game was even out. So I think I think that they if they've locked things into place this early when the game is meant to launch, essentially like a year from now, a little under a year from now, um, that gives them plenty of time to really, really nail down a roadmap and even a potential feature roadmap that they can release at some point, which is really nice. But we just know it won't be able to be done by the time we're gonna launch. And these type of things, if they're not already in, in some like guys, can be added to that list. Yeah, and and actually moved up the order of the list if we think they're super cool. So uh, just give you a take there. All right, here we go. First one, PTW Alien. Been around the community for a long time. Thank you for your ideas. So he's saying here, account high scores. Do we think we would implement those? We've already spoken actually in Fateless about wanting to give people that sense of, I can beat something. I can beat something which I've achieved. I can beat my own stuff. So this kind of like really runs straight into that. I would like to know at any point, how many arena fights, dungeon runs, campaign fights, etc. I've done over the life of my account. It would also be nice to see other player stats for comparison, and it would give me an idea of players progressing, activity levels, stuff like that. So there's a couple of things in our game- I'll wait to respond. I've spoken about already, which are gonna be really fun. And that's what we're trying to do. It's like, how do we bring the fun to this genre when we're coming in, you know, 10 years after the first games were released? And one of the things is actually going to be achievements and masteries. Now, in our world, you get masteries for mastering something, okay? When you become the master, you get new masteries, which you can then <laughs> add. <laughs> when... When he, when I first heard him saying this, he says the master or mastery like six times in a row. It it started to sound like yeah yeah. It started to sound like not a real word, you know, like you hear a word enough or you say it enough, it doesn't sound like a real word. Uh, <laughs> all I could think about was the master from Doctor Who, and I immediately went to the Discord and I was like, Doctor Who faction confirmed, like as a joke, you know. <laughs> to your heroes that you own so for example 
talking about dungeon runs here, there could be a mastery that's like, uh, go and kill Ooh, the gold yeah, yeah, yeah. golem 10,000 times. Yeah, and if you do, you unlock, I don't know, gold hunter or something. These are all made up, right? But ultimately, there's achievements that you can go and get, and out the back of that, you get a mastery which you could apply to your heroes, There's a lot to talk which about will enhance their builds if you want to build them in that type of way. And it also means that if there's particular masteries that you want, you can go after them. You can go out and try and get them. They will be hidden masteries that nobody knows until someone finds them. And then once they found them, we hope that there'll be this kind of like community, like, wow, how have you got that? And, you know, and it kind of like yeah, it spreads a bit of fun. So I really like this idea by Alien. This is definitely something that we're looking to do, like a, a, a page on your account where you can just flex. Yeah, this is definitely something along the lines of what we want to be doing. Okay. So I, I think I think Simon kind of missed a little bit of what's what's actually happening here. Talked about it a little bit at the end there, but so masteries are really cool. I like the idea of like becoming the best at something. I think somebody in the comments of this video had also suggested like if you're the first person to get the mastery or find the hidden one maybe there's like a an announcement across the game like or you get a special title or something like world first this or whatever because you know in in world of warcraft it's like a big thing when a new expansion comes out or a new raid comes out they sponsor fateless sponsored um uh method on their race to world first um whatever the first tier of the raid is in the in the new expansion of world of warcraft so like clearly that's a thing right um staying on masteries i hope that a bunch of the masteries aren't just do this thing ten thousand times because that's really egregious uh it's not creative um and uh there are reasons why i don't play certain dlcs of games that i really enjoy because it's literally just go and kill this thing ten thousand times and it's so boring and mind numbing and I would much rather, if I'm going to play a game that has an energy resource, I would much rather use that resource furthering my account than like having the ability to give all my characters 2.5% attack permanently. Like, regardless, I'm sure that's not how it's going to end up being, but back to the actual game idea. So going back to World of Warcraft, there's a page, there's like a stat page where you can see like the highest crit you've ever had, how many deaths you've had, you know, how how many mounts you have, or you know, generic stuff like that. But there's also some like pretty granular things, like what's your highest heal, things like that. And I've talked about this before. In I think in Watcher of Realms, in a couple other gotcha games, at the end of a fight, there is a breakdown of damage, who did how much damage, what character, you know, was, was their highest crit. Um, there's, you know, there's a, there's a post-fight breakdown of stats. And Raid kind of has that. They have, like, how much damage somebody dealt, how much shield somebody took, or how much healing they did, whatever. That's not enough. I don't think that's enough. Uh, information for it to be useful and I'm hoping there's not really I don't know really know if there's a way to make DPS trackers in the game it's not that kind of game right you know it's a turn-based game but like being able to see these stats really helps when you're trying to debate if one character is better than the other which is why I also hope that they have numbers when it comes to HP bars, shield bars, and uh, um, I guess like turn meter bars or whatever, like I really want to know how big the shield is. I really want to know how much HP this person has or how much healing it's doing or how much damage it's doing compared to somebody else. And if I don't have the access to those stats, I kind of just have to think like, and you see it, you see it in content creator videos now, like, oh, this character uses a shield and it kind of takes up like two and a half bars on their HP. Let's go do the other shield. And oh, this one's only one bar. So like clearly the other shield's bigger. And it's like, okay, why not just give me the numbers? Like, 
we don't have to play this guessing game. You could just give me the numbers. Uh, and it's not like that heavy. Like phones and computers can handle this. So it's it's not it's not difficult uh, to uh, at least on the back end. It might be you know I'm not saying it's an easy thing to implement. I'm just saying if if there is a way to track it, it should be implemented. And you know, and it kind of like yeah, it's dumping a thing. Berserker for oh. the game. Next one up here. Who's this one? Yes, tomorrow. Actually, does tons of suggestions. Thank you for that. Enemies attack their own team. Interesting. Have champions' abilities in the game to force an enemy to attack their own team through mind control, glamour, confusion, with a percentage chance. Berserker percentage chance to attack allies and raise attack, but uh, percentage chance to attack you as well. That's very cool, actually. Uh, can add higher crit as attacking own team surprises them. Lots of ways to make this interesting. Ah, some of the, I, this is literally my first read of the list that Gramps has done. <laughs> so some of these I don't really want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I think confusion's so, kind of fine. I think it's um, a great idea, yes, tomorrow. And I think confusion and like attacking your own ally with a percentage chance or attacking yourself. You know, it's it's been around in like t tons of games. It's like a pretty prevalent thing in Pokemon too. Um, it's not bad. It's it kind of fills the same space as being polymorphed or sheeped. Like, yeah, it's a hard CC, or it doesn't need to be a hard CC. It could just be like a high percentage chance that you could still like avoid it. Um, I think Berserker sounds a little bit more fun where it's like you do a lot more damage, but there's like a chance that you'll just do that damage to your teammates. Um, I think it's it's definitely a really interesting idea. I don't really know. You could have like sort of deception based um, characters that could be like pseudo CCers. Um, I don't know. It's interesting. Uh, I I'll tell you what I'll say on this one. Let me know in comments down below. How do you feel about this? Let's say somebody whacks you with an ability where instead of you attacking the enemy for the next round, all that happens is your team attack each other. How do you feel about that? Let me know down below. Really? Instead of attacking all your... Let me listen to that again. Where instead of you attacking the enemy for the next round... All that happens is your team attack each other. Like an ally attack, except like they say, you, Hercules, all on the opponent team, all of them will attack that one. That's interesting. That seems a little bit, a bit broken. <laughs> like... Like, you don't directly nuke the opponent's character, but their characters nuke them. Hmm. Seems a, a bit busted as an AoE. Other, how do you feel about that? Let me know down below. Really interested. Cow here. Uh, toggle portrait and landscape. No idea how it's viable, but it would be lovely to be able to switch between portrait and landscape modes without a functional you uh, with a functional ui so you're saying that you want to be able to play on your phone in portrait i guess um definitely not something we have spoken about it might be really difficult with the way we're doing combat and stuff like that like there's areas of the game where i can see this being very yeah valuable. like menuing let's say i don't know you're just doing like gearing or, or gear cleansing and stuff like that and confirmed gear in the game and, you know you're traveling and you just want to have it in portrait it's not something we've got on the plans right now um but i will speak to our ui designer i'm not sure I, d I don't know if this one a lot of the times with these ideas it's like value versus effort honestly that's the, just to give you the, the absolute honest thing it's a bit like the cameras right value that we would gain versus time and effort to implement every single thing we've got on our roadmap be we were in a sprint right now. We're actually in a milestone right now. We've got a number of sprints. And in those sprints, each of the developer team, each of the design team, the art team, we allocate uh, jobs to, for them to do, right? And it's like, oh, okay, in this two weeks, 
I need for a developer to implement how weapons will drop. This is kind of what okay, I was talking it about. Sounds like, oh, that's so easy. It's not weapons drop separately from gear. We've talked about this before. Simon has said very similar things in the past. Weapons do seem to be totally separate from gear. No, of course it's not. They've got to write the code for that. They've got to make sure the or it's a different works. They've got to make sure that type it's, it's of gear. scalable throughout the whole game. All of these things take a lot of time. So sometimes adding in nice to haves like this would just be pushed down the bottom of the pack, honestly. It's not a bad idea. I just don't know if it's going to be in. Endless boss rush. Um, so it says, it says, Gramps, start with a new boss. Then there's a turn timer when the next boss spawns. Over time, stronger bosses start spawning faster and faster until you get destroyed. Yeah, this is a cool idea. So at the moment, it's not planned for launch. Uh, but there's definitely been talked about this because of our map system. We actually got this kind of like modular system where we could, if we wanted to, each map's almost like a Lego brick. We could spawn brick after brick with different environments if we wanted to and this could be do cool. something like this this is a cool idea i think for an event yeah so yeah we're, definitely we're a big event, event type thing where i don't know like, like an uh, anniversary all event all of the the moons aligned in our world and the bosses were able to to come together Wh whatever law we decide to do this could be a lot of fun so yeah i like the idea who we got here Mathorian again been around the community for a long time since the the raid days Actually, him and uh, him and Taco back in the day, when I was streaming, honestly, it's, it was the most bizarre streams. Like, Mathurian was like, "Bam!" There's 100 subs on Twitch, which is a lot of money, by the way. Humble and then brag. Taco was like, "Bam!" I'm dropping 100 subs. I was literally losing my mind at this point. <laughs> uh, it was back in the early days on Twitch. Very, very fun, actually. Uh, good to see him still around the community. So we got here. Dynamic GM started content. Dynamic GM. I'm not sure this entirely fits in the context of this type of game, but I really do like overarching events that actually adapt. Oh, events that adapt based on what the community is doing and where the community has real choices to make. These events would be started by a games master. Yeah, so more like a D and D style. Um, overarching events that actually adapt based on what the community is doing and where the community oh so like um like wixwell essentially like wixwell where people are voting on abilities uh some things like this have happened in wow before um i'm not familiar with other games that have done it but i'm sure other mmos where like the way people allocate a resource like everybody is in this new zone and they're gathering mana and there's two different wells that they can dump their mana into and this is the entire player base and you could do the red one or the blue one and you say you know today i'm gonna put all mine in the blue and then we're gonna look at tomorrow and see across the globe which one has the most and then at the end of the month, if the blue one has more, you know, it's going to open this new zone and the other zone will be locked for a certain amount of time and nobody will get that one or vice versa or whatever. So it's really the community that drives what content is accessed before others. Um, I, I think it's interesting. Um, that could That could be something that could be tied into the roguelike stuff uh, or some event, you know, some event that's, you know, akin to Wixwell where in-game we're, like, choosing things as a whole community um, just to get people talking. Or, like, yeah, yeah, like uh, No Man's Sky or what was that? that new Helldivers 2 where like the community has as a whole has to get together to like do certain goals and if they do they unlock certain things for everybody or you know if they don't then there's like story implications or something like that yeah you know we've had conversations about this type of stuff a lot actually and again it comes to that implementation versus reward for the player these work really well I think in games where you have one hero 
that you're building out and then choices to make. What we were finding, so, so let's take an example of where this could work in our game and, and something we spoke about doing, but we're probably not going to do. Okay, so we were thinking, choose your starter hero, like, like this type of game does, but the starter hero that you pick starts you in their own world and then the subsequent kind of like rewards that you get early on and champions that you, you grab along the way are based on your start point. Okay, so mm. really fun start to the game, right? But also challenges of, you know, what if I went the wrong way? What if I'm now behind my buddy who seems to have gone like a more of an OP route? And also challenges of, okay, for that first week of Balance. gameplay, I feel like I've got my own experience compared to the next guy. But eventually, with this type of game, the paths do need to merge into the same because ultimately you're going to be fighting the same endgame boss, the same dungeons, that type of stuff. So that kind of got scrapped for tons of extra work for relatively low impact to the player. That, that's where we got to. It was like, actually, it feels like, okay, we get this, this initial hit of fun, but you're, you're kind of creating three lots of work of the same stuff which is only really the early, the very early game. So, so we kind of scrap that, but I don't mind the idea of, let's say we're gonna do, talk, say a world boss. We're, we're gonna do world bosses as like events now and then. So could the community basically forge a way to de decide mm. which world boss is gonna drop? That's interesting. And then forge how, how that event runs, maybe, maybe. It's yeah, in, uh, in AFK Journey, there's uh, a bunch of world bosses and it's literally everybody in the game versus this boss. The boss has like, you know, 4 trillion HP or some dumb number. So they'll sit, you know, you'll go up, you can do like X amount of attempts per day. You can do as much damage as you can. And then everybody else that's playing the game also does this. And if the boss gets downed within like a two week period or something like that, you have um, like... A lot of rewards you get like a lot of gear you get like cosmetics and shit like that it's an interesting one i like it i, I don't hey, know exactly what we could do with it but i do like it uh, okay boss destroys area over time with the environments being destroyed mm. uh who's this nicholas lp a cool boss mechanic for let's say a kraken could be a piece of land that gets destroyed each big boss nuke meaning that all the land could be destroyed in let's say x nukes and you have to kill the boss before all land is this lost. is very idea, mmo actually. so we're definitely going to have can't really, you can't really do this in a turn-based. Unless it's like uh, like the boss just gets more and more overpowered every turn you take or something like that. After a certain amount of time, like, like go berserk or something. In a turn-based where like... So like this is this is fine for a game where you like have freedom of movement. But it's, it's a railroad turn-based game. <clears throat> so like hexes of the map don't get destroyed and then you have like only one to stand on or whatever like phases or time so i, I don't again i don't want to say too much on on this because i don't want to spoil some of the boss stuff that we're going to drop but we haven't necessarily yeah yeah them. maybe like a healing um check like not not like clan boss or whatever that just does more damage over time it's like you have a debuff that every turn ticks for a certain percentage of damage or something. Like star boss fights. Uh, so I'll just leave you with that. Dispatch missions from Runan here. Uh, players collect creatures over time that could be sent to dispatch missions. These missions would vary. In oh, time. this would be good. This would uh, be good. Yeah, we've seen this type of thing in this sort of genre. I do like it. I, I don't really understand why Raid doesn't do dispatching. Um, it's very common in gacha games and hero collector games to do dispatches. Uh, it gives you a secondary reason to collect characters. If you don't have a base, it's really good. Uh, some of these games will have like a like a sim style base, like an Ark Knights or you know whatever, um, where your characters have a secondary thing that they're good at. So like a character, you know, has its like in game benefits, but then like in the base or. Um, you know, as a dispatcher, it's really good at bringing you back gold or whatever, like uh, some currency. I've actually got a cool idea around creature collection. Yeah, Ray, Ray just like actively doesn't care about giving you uh, things. Like, can you imagine if there was a dispatch that was like every 12 hours, you send, you know, three characters 
and you get a million gold or uh maybe maybe even like 50,000 silver like a like a terrible number of silver that'd be crazy but people would do it because they want more silver and something else that we're going to do with them but that's Wait, I'm run that back. genre I do like it i've actually got a cool idea around creature collection and something else that we're going to do with them but that's more like you hear that on creature collection there's okay so there's two ways this goes it's battle pets from world of warcraft where it's sort of like pokemon where you grab battle pets and you can battle against people um or they're going to uh they're going to partner with niantic and do like a pokemon go style like you can walk around the world and collect collect hades and zeus and all them like a <laughs> I hope it's battle pits. I hope it's battle pits. Which pets. I think is going to be actually sweet. But yeah, this type of vibe, I think we will have something like it in the game. And I hope it's I hope it's nothing like like oh the the creature collection is just cosmetic. Like when when pets in WoW were just cosmetic, like yeah, it's cool. Hey, you have this like floating eye behind you, cool, whatever. But as soon as it gave you a reason to battle and like collect them and use them, like that's that's when I started getting into it. Click account swap. Who's this one here? Omer, um, uh, very active <laughs> Discord. For PC, please allow multiple clients to be ran at this once. Uh, interesting. We're actually just. Uh, I think this is build not right great. Now. In fact, it's, it's almost ready to go. I can ask them about this type of stuff. For mobile, allow people to switch between accounts seamlessly without the need to relog. There's like a reason games don't really want you to multi box. Um, like they want you to invest in one account. Like game some games really understand like some games literally have like a uh you know, you roll on the beginner banner until you get the character that you want. And then you can move on with the game, which is super nice. It's basically just a a character selector. You select the five-star character you really like, cool. But like multi-boxing, like I'm I'm fine with re-rolling accounts or having an option to to re-roll but I don't really I don't really jive with the allow for multiple clients to be open. I don't know. Showing off during raid downtime. Uh, this yeah, isn't yeah. already on our <laughs> on our kind of like board of things to be done. I will make sure it is added cuz it's a great idea. Picture in picture support. Uh, who's this one? Here? This is kind of a no-brainer. Picture in picture support so people can multitask. Watch Netflix. Oh, I see. So what you basically minimize your game? Basically minimizing the game while still being able to use your device. Uh, I don't know the technical side of that. I think it's a good idea. Um, you know, if you're just doing like 50 multi runs or something and please, please, please do not include multi runs. Let it be that you can, if if it's going to be, I need to sit there and watch my characters go through the battle. Just make it an auto battle and don't put a cap on how many I can put in. Don't have a secondary currency that is the multi-battle currency. Maybe, maybe I'm confusing things. I think what he's saying is the auto battle times 50 like in raid is a currency like that's that's terrible i should just be able to do up to as many energy i have or more depending on currencies that i have like gems or whatever it and even go a step further like in certain certain games like in dislight you can queue up i think it's up to 10 multi battles multi auto battles and then Go F off and play other things in the game. Like you can go do a different battle in the game while the game in the background is doing like a farm for you. Or you could close the game. Like not like exit out of it, but you can like close your phone or whatever. Like, and they still run. Like that's, that is the type of quality of life that doesn't make me feel like I'm wasting my life.
you want to do something else on your phone yeah, without, yeah. like melting your your leg uh, i think that's a cool idea melting Leap your leg here champs in chat yeah love this idea uh cosmic winter king again very active on the discord thank you for that um does love boobies gotta say he's a bit like our art director one click link heroes <laughs> to view in chat my hero is this what what Simon. <laughs> maybe that's why the uh, the art director. Maybe that's why the the three sisters of fate look the way they did. <laughs> no, I I absolutely I absolutely agree with this. Like, if if they're trying to foster like an in game chat, it's it's super nice to be able to say like, hey. This is the piece of gear that I have, and you get to see the person's stats. Or this is the character I have, you get to see like what skills they have maxed or whatever. Um, and I'm totally here for, you know, like general chat, trade chat, you know. Um, I don't even know. <laughs> I can't even remember any of like the World of Warcraft abilities. Where you'd type in the word, like, you'd type in chat anal, and then you'd link, like, you know, the weapon destroyer of worlds or something. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, anal taunt, or, you know, whatever. You'd, you'd type in your ability, or you'd link your ability. Like, like those, those chat trains that would take over trade chat for, like, ten minutes. Like, yeah, it got really annoying, but, like, it was so good. It's so dumb. It's so stupid, but hell yes. These sets, these masteries, let me link the entire hero. Yeah, Epic 7 do this really well. Uh, same thing for gear, instead of having to describe main stats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we definitely want to do this. Um, Pre-release pulls. Have an, entire, uh, have an event where prior to release, people get to pull one or few summons and keep those heroes on release. Uh, so mythology here. This sounds very similar to what Dragonair did for their kind of like pre pre release launch event. I loved it. I think it was a brilliant mm. piece of marketing from Dragonair. Like, I'd say they had. I'm thinking way about this the wrong players way. Players on launch than they should have done because of this event. We want to do this same thing. In fact, we've got this this idea for Gamescom where people could kind of do this in person with in like an event style. Um, so draft I events. Space as we we flesh that out but uh, like uh like magic or like a uh, hearthstone so i i was thinking about this the wrong way simon's mentioning um like pre-release of the game um so so like maybe there's an open beta like a month or two ahead of the launch and like most things get wiped or something but like your whole account isn't wiped. Typically, a beta um, before the launch of a game, you know, it's it's understood, and you sign that you know you're okay with, you know, everything that happens in the beta is going to get reset and wiped for launch, and you got to start with a whole new thing. But like, if you know, if if I pull like a really like a five star character or a six star character, or whatever, a legendary in the beta. I want to be able to keep it, like, if I really like that character. So when the game launches, like, maybe you're, like, a step ahead of, like, people who didn't participate in the beta, but maybe that's a reward for participating in the beta. Like, you get a little bit of a jump on powering through the campaign or something like that. Uh, but you get to keep at least the characters, maybe not the progress of the characters um, that you've already used and started to learn or something like that. Buy a, uh, buy a set number of shards for a specific event, play event, using only those rolls. So this, <clears throat> I think I think it's a later question that he'll talk about something very similar to this. Um, I was thinking of, in terms of like a magic pre-release. So typically when a new set comes out for a Magic the Gathering set, the weekend before, there are events that you can play online or in person. Uh, where you get to to play with and keep a small number of cards from the new set that launches 
um, the next week. So it's the people who actively go and choose to play the set early get like a limited window where they can collect a limited amount of these cards and get like a feel for it, right? Get like a little taste. It sort of builds hype, uh, especially when people are like pulling really cool things and they're talking about like, yeah, you can actually get this like in a week. Stores aren't allowed to sell more. Um, you know, I used to work uh, on like the largest store in the East Coast. Um, you uh, come Monday, the stores can't sell anymore. And they can only sell like a s certain type of product during the weekend anyway. Uh, so you really want to play these events. It drives people to play those events before it comes out. So like imagine there's a new event coming out, almost like the Asgard Divide or whatever. And there's a specific banner that's got all four of the Asgard heroes on it. And like <clears throat> maybe there's a smaller chance to get Odin, but he's like the you know the really good one or whatever. Um, and the week before there's maybe like you're saying like a draft or there's you know so something going on where like for a limited amount of time you can maybe play the game and earn like a single 10 pole or something like that on this next banner but that's it so you do your 10 pole and the you know inev inevitably there's going to be people who post about hey i got this really cool character and then you're going to start seeing them in pvp a week early or you're going to see them in game in rosters a week early and you're going to be like, oh, man, I really wanted that character. Like, I can see how they're doing in the game. Like, And then content creators get a hold of it or, you know, whatever. Um, it sort of just, like, builds hype. That's where I thought they were going with this. Um, I think either's fine. I think being able to keep characters that you pull in an open beta uh, makes sense, too. Yeah, cool idea. Definitely want to be involved in it. Point capped dungeon. For this example, is, I think, similar to what you were talking about. Tomorrow. For example, the dungeon's point limit is 1,000 points, and the way it works is a legendary 500 points. Oh, I see. So you're only allowed to hit a certain point limit with your team. This is a cool idea. So we're definitely going to have something like dungeon mutations, and within that, your rewards could heighten if you hit certain criteria. This feels like a, an idea of what a mutation could do, or <coughs> a vibe of how that could work, but I do like it. Oh my money. god. Get out of here. I do like this idea quite a lot, actually. So, certainly in our PvP, like our um, Freaking online ass. PvP, where you're basically going to be using champions that not necessarily from your account, this could be cool. It could also be cool for like a PvP tournament using your account, where, again, you're only allowed a certain class of hero to enter. Cool idea. Uh, yeah, I think, I think it'll... it'll be very similar to Hearthstone, Hearthstone Draft, where you open a pack and there's three cards and you pick one of the three and it could be like any rarity or whatever. And you build a deck based off of what you get, you know, card by card. Um, and sometimes you play against somebody in Hearthstone that just has like a ton of legendaries and their deck is just way overpowered and it's like whatever. But if you did something of a PvP mode or an event or something like that where like there's may maybe you're you're given for the event so you don't get to keep any of this stuff you only keep resources that you might gain for playing the event like you enter the event or maybe it costs like a certain amount of gems to get in or something dumb you get 50 rolls on this specialized banner maybe it has you know a certain amount of legendaries, a certain amount of epics, a certain amount of rares, and like they're curated towards like five of the ten factions or whatever. And you pull. That is a separate hero list that you have. You have fifty pulls worth. Maybe you're guaranteed at least one legendary in those in those fifty or whatever. And you're meant to make a team of four PvP. And you play it either Maybe you have it be live PvP or uh, inactive PvP, um, where it's just attack versus defense. Um, and maybe all the characters are like, you know, they're normalized some way where they're, you know, maxed out level, maxed out stats with a certain gear type or whatever. So it's really, it really comes down to skill and team building rather than uh, luck based. But I also kind of like the point buy system. It's just, it's kind of, you know, six of one, half a dozen of another. 
cool. It could also be cool for like a PvP tournament using your account where, again, you're, you're only allowed a certain class of hero to enter. It's a cool idea. I uh, think a certain, a certain class and like, like the, you can only get rewards in this tournament if you beat Spider with Barbarians. Like, that is the lowest hanging fruit and the lowest creativity on the ladder. And those, I think, um, are not fun. I think they're... The, the one that was fun was the uncommon one. Just because it was so different. It was so dumb. Just using uncommons and using all my armigers. <laughs> uh, it's just like the lowest creativity. Like, oh, you can only use barbarians here. It's, it's just... You could do a lot better. If you don't want people to keep what they got, add an exclusive currency to the shop. Yeah, it could be like a like a different color gem. And you get that slower or you pay for it. And... Um, that's how you enter. Or by playing that, you get a special type of role. Or, you know, something that doesn't easily cross over into what you're normally doing. I'm clicked. Clear all red dots, yes. Fringe. You know why they do the red dots thing? It's literally to I could see I could see if it was like a tournament, almost like Hearthstone. So in Hearthstone, I'm pretty sure it's like you go until you win twelve or you lose three, something like that. Like if you if you win X amount of times, like you've earned it. You get to keep something. Or you get to like bank uh, you know, purple crystals. And then the next time this event comes around, you still have purple crystals and you win again and you bank it. And then like over time you get, you accrue this um, currency that lets you just outright buy like literally everything that you pulled or the legendary that you were guaranteed or from a special shop that like has rotating legendaries or something like that. Something to keep people engaged and keep them playing rather than just like win-loss ratio. Uh, to make sure that you're going into different areas in the game. Like, the more I'm in this developer space, I'm like, oh, I kind of get it. It's really annoying, but I do kind of get it. No. One click, clear all. So, oh, don't forget to go into the market. You might some find something cool. Oh, by the way, have you checked out... Or the don't make the them red, please. Don't forget to don't like, I get it. Your daily reward. Don't forget to do your daily quests. All of that stuff is basically just giving you signals to be like, okay, you're going to clear it out, but you might actually go in there and say, oh, yeah, I'll just do those things. And obviously, people want you to stay on the game. That's, that's the idea, right? So there's one place where I promise this is going to happen. And, yeah, um, yeah. Design it's, it's easy to... It's easy to clear the red dots in Zenless for the most part. It's not as easy to clear the <laughs> exclamation points you see all around the map. Yeah, yeah. Make yeah. sure you write this one down. When you have got heroes that you've collected for the <laughs> first time. Yeah, not if you don't set a birthday or like um, connect your Facebook account or something dumb. An index. I don't know. See, there's two things, right? You tell me what you want. I can either put in there a button that just says, clear them all. Clear them all. I don't, all. Care. I don't care what the other option is. If you click into them, then do you want a reward for clicking on them? Like loads of these games, it's like. Okay, maybe, maybe I should have waited. Maybe I should have waited. So a big thing, we were talking about Zenless in the chat here. Zenless Zone Zero. Slippery Slope. Hit, listen, hear me out. Hear me out. Zenla Zone Zero, Honkai Star Rail, and Genshin. I don't know about Honkai Impact because I don't really play that game. Um, all give you the premium, like, um, wishing currency, the rolling currency. They'll give it to you every time you click on a notification that's, like, uh, acknowledging that you got, like, uh, inf info on a new enemy or something like that. It's not, like, everywhere. But it is in certain places, like like you're going through the, the new uh, parts of the game and you're learning about a new um, mechanic in the game. You read through it, you acknowledge that you read it, and you get five gems. Like, it's not much, 
but hey, it's free. And like you acknowledge that you did it, but don't also like, like don't maybe go back to it. Oh, get 20 gems. I've just clicked on a dude that I've got. Oh, I clicked on their law button. 20 but gems. Also, like yeah, don't make it tied to like things that occur outside the game. Do you want that? Or do you just want to, to get rid of it? Oh, this is. Oh, I would actually, take. I would take the. Let's, let us clear it about summoning the fusion. So he's talking specifically about like a fusion thing. But anyway, I, I kind of get the vibe. The red dots. I would take let the me, let me clear all button. I get it. Robust plan messaging methods. This is a Luma living. Luma living. There needs to be a robust system. This video is way too long. Way to message others. <laughs> my my video. Not, not sign it. Uh, ideally, there would be options for world chat. Deal drop. Yeah, it's a bit more just like a, a mailbox for conversation, I guess. So definitely we want to bring a decent chat system into the game. We want it to, to work for your guild, for clans. We want to have a, a, a more simple way to link towards your personal clan discords and stuff like that. So this is a cool- Having like a to... custom in-game, like you can, this is like a, this is a slippery slope. You really have to be careful. But if you could integrate with Discord, which might be a, a thing that they can do. I'm, I'm sure that Fateless is a Discord partner, so I'm sure they have some kind of communication with Discord. If they had a, a integration where, like, as a clan, you could say, you could set up an invite to your clan Discord right in-game that people can choose to click on if they want, um, that'd be super good because, you know, otherwise you have to, like, type in the link, and, like, that's annoying saying on our radar and then the last one i've got here for this oh <laughs> get your ideas in front of us this is drams uh, well done drams doing us a bit of advertising head over to the discord which is thriving right now we've got over twenty thousand people twenty one thousand people in the discord you can come in here click on either the innovation ideas section uh or come into like the game idea ideas mega thread create your own thread and yeah let us know what you think should be added into the game you know what I really like seeing? It's where it's like mini features or ideas for bosses. I still have two or, things I want to talk about. You know, ideas for quality of life improvements. All of that stuff is great. One is a quality of life. Some of our game design. What's less helpful is just be like, make game good. <laughs> We're trying that anyway. Like we definitely, absolutely on the, the core of everything we do is like, is this actually going to be fun? This is actually going to be cool. Now, we're going to make mistakes along the way, don't get me wrong, but the core of what we're doing is, can we make a really great game? And that's what we're trying to do. Nice. Oops. I clicked a different video. Oh, this is the Zox. God, I tried to pause the video. There's Zox. We're not going to go over this. Um, so, my two things. Um, one, uh, Wukong needs to be in the game as a launch character. I don't care if it's the first banner, if there are banners in the game. I don't care if he's part of the, the initial launch, part of the Jade faction. He needs to be in the game. And one of his abilities has to reference the word Vex. That's my price for all the time I'm putting into making content for this game. That's my price. What say you? Anyway. <laughs> Number two, my actual point. Um, when and I saw this in I saw this in the Discord um, like a couple weeks ago, and I had commented on it, and somebody had said like, you know, don't punish us when we lose a round. So like in in raid, for example, in Iron Twins, it might cost you twenty energy to attempt an Iron Twins run. It costs it costs two currencies, but we'll we'll stick with just energy. Um, if you lose and you don't defeat the boss, you are out that 20 energy. In Ark Knights and in other similar gacha games, when you lose a match or a round or whatever, a stage for the first time, I think the first time that day, you are fully refunded your energy. Every subsequent loss you are refunded all but one energy every time you lose or uh, restart or exit out. Um, 
I don't want to be punished for losing. I want the punishment for losing to be the time that it took for me to lose and the actual act of losing. I want, you know, with with like a limited energy pool, I I can only lose a certain amount of times before I get like just discouraged and, oh, I have no more currency for the day. Um, guess I don't do any winning today. Like that's just, that's just not fun. Um, so yeah, don't tie... And it, maybe just don't tie energy to, to losing. Like maybe uh, you get it all back if you lose. Or just like infinite free refreshes or, you know, whatever. It's like it only takes the currency when, once you win. That's that's it. That's my, that's my suggestion. Imagine punishing failure in a game. Come on. Come on. Anyway, that's going to do it for me. Um, if you, like I said in the beginning, if you want to... Uh, Participate in the chat while we're, we're going through these videos and the leaks and everything. Come to twitch.tv slash vexing live. I have links down in the description for both the Fateless video and this video. Give it some love, like, and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you Friday for the new leaks. Have a good night. Bye!